Mam sale ya, good afternoon. Hi Ludwig. Hi Bosani. Yep. Oh yes, okay. Hi Sunny, yes, we Hi, can see you now. Okay, okay. Thank you. So, tapos ka na sa meeting? <laughs> tapos na kanina. Okay. Back up ka ba? Back up? Hindi naman kailangan Ludwig. Hindi kailangan. May problem ba connection mo? Hindi rin natin alam. Hi guys, we're already on Facebook Live, so you will turn off your microphones now.
Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, we will start in uh, three minutes to all our Facebook viewers and those who are uh, participating in this webinar uh, on WebEx. Uh, um, see you at two o'clock. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. It's Thursday once again, and welcome to the PIDS webinar series where we tackle development issues based on data and evidence. I'm Sheila CR, and I will be moderating this event. For this week, we will talk about small scale mining in the Philippines and the issues surrounding this sector. Small scale mining is an important economic activity for a significant number of small, small miners in rural communities. A 2018 policy brief released by the Philippine Council for Industry, Energy and Immersion Technology Research and Development noted that the country's artisanal and small scale mining industry comprises 75% of the country's gold production. Despite its importance, various environmental, social, regulatory, labor, and health issues hound the sector, which, const which constrain its development. To formally open our event and share her insights about the topic, may I call on the president of PIDS, Dr. Celia Reyes. Um, Cel? Thank you, Sheila. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, before we start, let me acknowledge the following. I uh, would like to welcome to this uh, afternoon's webinar, Department of Finance Assistant Secretary Maria Teresa Habitan, um, Department of Labor and Employment Assistant Secretary Maria Teresita Cueco, um, VSP Monetary Board Member and Friend of PIDS, Dr. Bruce Tolentino, VSP Director Veronica Bayangos, Consular Attache uh, Marilyn Ramos of the Philippine Consulate General in Hong Kong. Uh, welcome to our webinar. Um, Dole Institute for Labor Studies Executive Director Ama Carisma Lubrin Satumba, DOST Regional Director Romel Serrano, House of Representatives Director Lorena Fernandez, 
CPBRD Director Dominador Gamboa, Commission on Human Rights Director Renante Basas, National Academy of Science and Technology Executive Director Luningning Samarita Domingo, NEDA Director Richard Emerson Ballester, Occupational Safety and Health Center Executive Director Noel Binag, Director Rebecca de Guzman of the Office of Senator Cynthia Villar, CEPO Executive Director Merwin Salazar. And for uh, the academy, we're joined this afternoon by Dean Evelyn Del Mundo of the Cavite State University College of Nursing and Dean Glenn Pajares of the Graduate School of Arts and Sciences and College of the University of San Jose Recoletos. Um, and from the CSOs, uh, we're joined this afternoon by Vice Chairperson Aniseta Baltar of the Concerned Citizens of Abra for Good Government, Executive Director Maria Rosario Lopez of the Jaime Angpin Foundation, um, Director Daniel Agustin of the Masagana Sakahan, VP for Communications and National Coordinator, Mr. Rocky Dimaculangan of Towards Sustainable Mining, Executive Director, Mr. Ronald Residoro of the Chamber of Mines of the Philippines, and um, of course, our very own PIDS Board of Trustee, Dr. Gilbert Alianto. Let me also welcome our guests from other government agencies, local government units, the academe, civil society, media, private sector, as well as viewers from our Facebook page. We welcome you all to our weekly webinar. Today's virtual event will feature the PIDS research paper titled Answering Crit Critical Questions on Mining in the Philippines to be presented by engineer Ludwig John Pasqual. He co-authored this study with PIDS Senior Research Fellow Sunny Domingo and PIDS Research Analyst RB Joy Manehar. The research paper will provide us an update on the status of the small-scale mining sector, highlight current issues that confronts the sector, and provide options for policy augmentation with the overall goal of improving performance and enhancing net positive impact of small-scale mining operations in the country. Specifically, the study highlighted institutional, regulatory, labor, environmental, and social issues that we need to delve into so that we can maximize the potential benefits of small-scale mining operations in the country. It stressed the need for a redefined sector type, scale, and coverage, harmonized regulatory structures, and strict implementation of the People's Small Scale Mining Program, as well as complementary policies and regulations for contrabands. The general direction is to aim for a win win solution that would benefit all key players that include small scale miners, host communities, or local government units, and other stakeholders. The key to maximizing the potentials of the small-scale mining sector is to strictly implement and follow laws and regulations without endangering the environment and safety of those working in the sector. As we all know, the Philippines is rich in minerals with around 14 million hectares of land known to be potential areas for metallic and non-metallic mineral reserves. We should be able to tap this natural wealth in improving our economy. According to the data of the Mines and Geosciences Bureau, or MGB, in 2019, the mineral production of the country was at 130.73 billion pesos, while our mineral export amounted to $4.3 billion. The mining industry has also employed around 190,000 workers and paid taxes amounting to 15.47 billion pesos last year. Mining companies have also invested billions of pesos in environmental protection and rehabilitation programs as part of their commitment to help the government conserve nature. The government on its part is currently implementing the Minahang Bayan program, which is intended to regulate small scale mining operations in the country. We will hear more of this from our discussant, Engineer Teodorico Sandoval of the MGB, who will share his comments and insights about the findings and recommendations of the study this afternoon. Um, once again, let me thank you for joining this seminar, uh, this webinar, and I'd also like to thank our webinar team led by Dr. Sheila CR and assisted by Wang Taliping and Gwen De La Cruz for organizing this weekly webinar, Take Note Weekly, to disseminate all our research findings. With this, I give back the floor to our moderator and look forward to your active participation during the open forum. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mamsel. 
Uh, before we proceed with our presentation, may I remind everyone about our house rules. So for all attendees, you may have noticed that your microphone is muted upon entry, and we do this to prevent unnecessary background noise. But this doesn't mean that you cannot um, participate in a discussion. So to join the open forum, simply use the chat box, which is located at the lower part of the screen. Just type your name and affiliation and your question and uh, send it to everyone. I repeat to everyone and not to a particular person. I will read your question during the open forum. And since we have limited time, please make your questions concise. And for our viewers on Facebook, you're also very much welcome to participate in our open forum. Just type your question in the comment se section of Facebook. Let us now proceed with the presentation. And our speaker is a metal metallurgical engineer with more than 30 years of experience in the mineral processing and metal refining industries, providing technical and management support services in a variety of areas from metallurgical testing, flow sheet design, techno-economic studies, technolog uh, technology transfer and market entry strategy development up to project fund sourcing and strategy and implementation. He is a technical consultant of the Development Academy of the Philippines for the Mining Industry Coordinating Council, Director of Global Technical Support at the CVMR Corporation, and Chief Operations Officer of Filipinas MedDev Incorporated. He co-wrote the PID study, which he will be presenting with Dr. Sunny Domingo, PIDS Senior Research Fellow, and RV Joy Manihar, Research Analyst. Friends, Engineer Ludwig Pascual. Engineer Ludwig? Yes. Uh, yes. Uh, share my, yes. Yes. I kindly share your uh, presentation now. Okay. Over to you now, Engineer. Okay. Uh, good afternoon, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I trust you are all well. Uh, thank you for attending. Uh, for the next 30 minutes, uh, I shall present key findings, issues, insights, and recommendations uh, covered in the study entitled Answering Critical Questions on Mining in the Field. Uh, this is the second phase of the study, and it focuses on the small scale mining sector. Uh, the study was conducted under the supervision of Dr. Sonny Domingo as project manager and RV Manihar of the IDA. Both are also co-authors to the paper. Now, here, on, here in are the objectives of the study uh, to assess current policy landscape on small-scale mining operations in the Philippines, uh, to conduct uh, industry analysis and look into the contributions of small-scale mining operators. Uh, to address critical issues uh, being raised as regards to small-scale mining operations in the country and uh, provide recommendations on possible policy augmentation and implementation arrangements to improve the current situation. Now, wh while we have uh, attempted to provide recommendations on possible policy augmentations, uh, these are not as comprehensive nor uh, in detail as we have wanted this to be uh, due to lack of more accurate data on the sector. Uh, this is very ironic, uh, really, uh, because this sector has been the subject of various uh, and countless uh, even uh, research studies in the past. These limitations are in turn caused by the continued prevalence of informality in the sector. Okay, so for context, uh, let's define uh, small-scale mining first, as it is defined uh, in the Republic Act uh, number 7076, or the People's Small-Scale Mining Act of 1991. To quote, small-scale mining uh, refers to mining activities which rely heavily on manual labor using simple implements and methods and do not use explosives or heavy mining equipment. Now, this definition can be considered uh, identical to the definitions established by other countries and international government organizations. But the variations are on the processes by which uh, each country writes, decrees, implements its regulations toward the small-scale mining sector. And it is important that such uh, definitions 
also are made to mark a delineation between large scale and artisanal or small scale mining. Now, we're uh, having such delineations in our law. The Philippines is one of the, those countries uh, observed by the OECD, or Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development, uh, noting that uh, countries that have specific legal provisions for artisanal and or small scale mining sometimes encounter uh, problems uh, with miners uh, trying to define the operations as small scale or even artisanal in order to avoid having to comply with stronger mining regulations. So indeed, uh, many small scale mining operations in the Philippines uh, can pass as uh, a large scale operation. Now, the motivations why anybody uh, will be involved in small scale mining activity uh, ranges from poverty or just making a living uh, to entrepreneurial or making a profit. Uh, considering that small scale mining is both ideological and economic opportunity. The study, as uh, it was written, uh, follows the same logic, uh, logical flow of thought when developing industry roadmap or strategy. Uh, it attempts to answer the critical questions of where are we now, where do we need to go, and how do we get there? The outline of this presentation, therefore, will discuss the following. Uh, to answer the question, uh, where are we now? We shall present the uh, status of small scale mining in the country, its costs and benefits, and key issues. Then to answer the question, where do we need to go? We shall present proposed activities for policy augmentation, policy implementation enforcement, and imposition of regulatory bottlenecks. Now, the third and finally, to answer the question, how do we get there? We shall briefly introduce the recommendations to formulate national research plan, roadmap, and manage eventual implementation. Now, let, let us start with the current mm -hmm. policy landscape. So in general, the government, as manifested by the last seven administrations, including the incumbent, acknowledges the potential of economic contributions of small scale mining activity and does consider the activities worthy to be supported and thus it needs to be formalized and regulated. Uh, the Philippine uh, government has created more than 11 national laws or republic acts that uh, either directly or indirectly promote, develop, and improves the performance and regulation of small-scale mining operations in the country. Uh, the Philippines also is a signatory to uh, several international agreements improving working standards in artisanal or small-scale mining, such as the Convention of the Rights of the Child in 1990 and the Minamata Convention of Conmetry in 2013. Uh, the implementers who, of these laws are the DNR, uh, the Department of Environment and Natural Resources, through the MGD, uh, by virtue of the of DNR Department Administrative Order 2015 03 which is the implementing rules and regulations of the Small Scale Mining Act of 1991. The local government units, by virtue of the Public Act 7160, or the local government code of 1992, and the Philippine National Police and the Armed Forces of the Philippines. Now, in attempting to quantify how many workers are involved in small-scale mining activity, we can cite figures from previous studies. Uh, both the government units and the mines and their scientific bureau do have their own uh, figures. Apparently, estimates vary widely. Number of small scale operations uh, reaches over 3,000 groups, while total workers are uh, reaching 500,000. Uh, certainly, if considering the number of people dependent on small scale mining, uh, these figures in increase by a certain multiplier. Uh, that number is estimated to be four at the moment. Uh, the regions, uh, no, in one region, uh, 2017 inventory of small-scale mining operation. Uh, it shows that 3% uh, are female workers 
and 6% are considered stalled labor. Around 80% of the total number of small scale mining operations are unregistered. Now, this is a graph uh, showing uh, compiled data from the Mines and Jail Sciences Bureau, the Banco Central of Filipinas, and the Hong Kong Census Statistics Department. Uh, we need to use uh, the harmonized system code of 710812 for gold non monetary either in bullion or dore. Actual grades, however, need to be confirmed with the Hong Kong government. It shows that in 2018, uh, around 99 tons did not come from large scale mining operations, nor was sold by the BSP. Uh, these are imports going to Hong Kong. Uh, hence, uh, we may deduce that the difference came from sources uh, undetected by our local customs. Uh, this is where the government needs to be able to correct such uh, apparent leakage. We can uh, justify later on uh, that most of this may come from small scale mining activity. The study also showed that the Mines and Geosciences Bureau can uh, or does have a reliable database of small scale mining operations. Uh, one region uh, was uh, their findings that there are more mineral processing operations than mining operations at a ratio of three, three mineral processing plants per one mining operation. Another finding is that more than 90% of existing large scale mining or exploration, no, 90% uh, of existing uh, small scale mining operations are uh, within large scale mining uh, or exploration zone. Uh, these are very good data sets that can be analyzed per region. Full transparency uh, and availability of data uh, critical to developing the industry sector is obviously hampered, uh, for one, by, by the continued uh, pervasiveness of informality in the sector. Uh, since the enactment of the Small Scale Mining Act in 1991 and up to August 2019, uh, during which our data gathering uh, activities uh, East. Uh, that is about 28 years. And in that 28 years, there were only 17 million buy-in areas to clear. All small-scale mining operations outside of these areas are considered illegal. Out of the approximately 3,300 small-scale mining operations, less than 23% are registered, mm -hmm. and only less than 0.8% or 17 can legally operate. Still on the status of small-scale mining, uh, an industry analysis of the sector needs to have a stakeholder. Uh, since unlike a pure private undertaking, a small-scale mining operation may be akin to a government social project. Uh, we need to understand uh, the variety of stakeholders that have interest in the project, identify needs, manage expectations and assess how this needs to how these needs can be uh, supplied by the small scale mining project or projects uh, being developed there can be several ways to assess uh, those needs and or influence level of stakeholders of project uh, this slide uh, presents the degree of influence of each stakeholder uh, to policies and the welfare of the small-scale mining workers. Uh, please note that such analysis may vary per project, per community, per province, or per region. Similar analysis has direct application in identifying key influencers for certain development uh, initiatives. Now, coupling uh, or transposing 
such stakeholder analysis uh, with a value chain analysis can help identify specific areas where certain small scale mining projects will require support and from whom and from what dating agency. Uh, this slide shows a value chain of a legal small scale mining project with key stakeholders and which can be uh, can vary depending on the unique context per project, per barangay, per municipality, per province and region, or, or region. Now, similarly, this can be done for when trying to implement formalization or legalization programs, attracting or convincing unregistered or informal uh, small-scale mining groups by being able to identify which value chain activity or set of activities for a specific project lacks support. Still, in attempting to find a better ways to develop the sector, operating models or templates need to be identified. Now, we have identified three categories which can describe operating models of small scale mining operations. Now, in terms of structure, the small scale mining operation can either be uh, subsistence mining or for survival only, uh, can be a financial operator, can be a financial operator and buyer. And it can be only an independent entrepreneurial miner. Now, in terms of tenurial setup, now the SSM operation can either be small scale mining operations under large scale mining tenements, small scale mining under mining patterns, small scale mining under no go zones or protected areas. And we have the legal small scale mining operation, which is within nationally declared Minan Bayan area. Now, in terms of operations within Minan Bayan area, since a Minan Bayan area needs to be reviewed and declared by the DNR secretary prior to being uh, declared, we can describe the Minan Bayan area as either locally declared, which falls short of being national declared, which technically may still be may still render the small scale mining operation in such, such areas legal. And we have the nationally declared Minambayan area, which has been reviewed and formally cleared by the DNR secretary. On the next, on the next two slides are a list of benefits and costs of small scale mining operations. Now, the lists are categorized by social, economic, environmental, and technical aspects. Obviously, the lists are not as comprehensive as can be, and such lists can certainly be expounded to even include targets. When applied uh, per individual project area and compared with such targets, uh, we, can, we can see gaps. Uh, and improvement opportunities can emerge. Now, the existence of improvement opportunities in, in this slider are shown in red font. Now, here is the, the cost slide. Now, the cost of small scale mining operations agreeably, agreeably all costs represent improvement opportunities. Now, the, the past slides uh, presented compressed versions of sections on the status, status of small scale mining in the Philippines. But basing on an analysis on findings of the entire study, we can summarize issues uh, as follows. Structures on, on nature of small scale mining. Uh, in this issue, uh, one example is the almost non-existence of efforts on the, on the ground by regulators to put pressure to regulate the actors who 
legally gain the most from SSM operation. Uh, these are the financiers and the black market players. Issue number two, uh, monitoring and enforcement. This is about capacity or capability issue where enforcement capability is not institutionalized to be rolled off on a routine and regular basis. And it still takes a task force to do this. Issue number three, uh, metallics versus non-metallic. This issue is uh, about treating small scale mining of select non-metallic minerals. as not covered by the public act 7076 that restricts mining activities within declared minan buyan area. Issue number four, policy overlaps and policy action. Policy overlaps uh, concerns conflicts with uh, Republic Act 7160 or the local government code. There's still a lot of confusion uh, uh, in that area. LGU autonomy, consent and oversight. Now, this issue concerns constitutional guarantees of autonomy of LGU, uh, despite clarifications from the Supreme Court that the constitutional guarantee for autonomy only means administrative autonomy. Now, regulatory framework and legalities. Uh, this concerns uh, issuance of small scale mining contracts two projects even before the Minan Bayan area covering the project site have not yet been declared. Issue number seven, leakages. Now, this concerns loss of income to government due to under declaration, misdeclaration, and undervaluation of mineral or metal products. Environmental issues and concern. Now, this issue concerns the continued use of banned chemicals and lack of guidelines on design and construction of appropriate environmental structures uh, to treat mine or mill waste, such as tailings storage facilities on a small scale. Now we have community related concerns. These this are uh, an example of this issue. Is the influx of miners from other provinces uh, competing with local workers. Now, last, uh, we have traders, black market versus the Banco Central and Filipina. This is primarily uh, the selling and buying of produce that, that are undetected by government. So where to go from here? Now, we, 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 we can categorize our directions into two. Formalization, policy augmentation, policy implementation and enforcement, and the position of, uh, imposition or decongestion of regulatory bottom. First, formalization. We need to make small scale mining an acknowledged and acceptable occupation in communities or provinces where small scale mining is truly really technically and economically feasible. So we need to know how to gather and need, uh, gather the needed data in the most comprehensive, systematic way possible. We need to have firmer basis on how to resolve pervasive informality. A national research plan has to be designed and implemented to this end. We need to have a complete profile and inventory of the sector. We need to know its players, stakeholders, degree of influence to minors, welfare, and have a full understanding of informality. Also in parallel, Continuing to fast track the processing of Minambayan applications will hasten the formalization process. Second, policy augmentation. 
we need to clarify uh, terminology and redefine sector type, scale, and coverage. We need to redefine equipment use and investment threshold. We need to redefine classification based on commodities and processing byproducts. We need to clarify on what kind of clearances are required by the DNR secretary. And we need to harmonize regulatory structure. Thirdly, policy implementation and enforcement. We need enhancement and strict implementation of the People's Small Scale Mining Program, as indicated in RA 776. Specifically, according to the plans and programs committed as a small scale mining contractor, such as the annual safety and health program, the community development management program, and the like. And implementation of re related uh, complementary policies, uh, like the Indigenous Peoples uh, Rights Act, the regulation of contraband, the National Integrated Protected Area System Act, the Forest Code, the Local Government Code. Now, we, uh, we need a non implementation of obsolete conflicting policy. And we can identify the, uh, the 16 laws. Now, recognition of the primacy of RA 7076. Even due respect to policy hierarchy, so we have the Constitution, then the Republic Act, then the Executive Orders, then the Department Administrative Orders, then the Memorandum Circulars, etc. Uh, we need to clarify transparency, transparency of benefit sharing agreement in relation to taxes royalties, land lease between mining associations, landlords, LGUs, and miners. We need to create partnership templates with large-scale mining companies. We need to adjust and impose higher penalties for violators. We need to clarify the fines to include financiers and officials of small-scale mining groups such as cooperative associations, regardless of operational template or internal arrangement. And we need to instill accountability. Fourthly, uh, imposition or decongestion of regulatory battle. Now, we can classify this in terms of inputs, operations, and markets. In terms of inputs, we need to redefine thresholds for chemicals and explosive regulations amidst any new small scale mining uh, definition. Definitions of scale and types, uh, and definitions of small scale mining activity. We need to strengthen manpower regulation, security for wage earners or, or common laborers. We need to redefine uh, thresholds for capital and machinery. We need to clarify penurial instruments as mining patterns. Now, we need to rethink sequence of documentary requirements as FPIC, ECC, LGU permits. Uh, ECC should be prior to DNR secretary school. We need a provision of support for the less prohibited, uh, less prohibited access to credit. We need to mobilize government-owned financial institutions to act as mineral bank, for example. Now, in terms of operations, there is a need to institute, institutionalize and standardize uh, frequent monitoring and effective enforcement. Uh, we need to streamline processing plant accreditation. And we need to duplicate government support templates 
such as the DOST funded processing plan. We need to be specific on local government oversight functions and roles. Remove vagueness in Minambayan declaration, locally and nationally declared. We need to roll out more effective tools and plans in monitoring material movement. We need to recommend better templates for sharing and compensation among miners and other actors. We need to assure environmental compliance and disaster risk management, as tailings management, uh, mine structural safety and integrity assurance, downstream uh, protection. And we need to address uh, the question of liability. Now, in terms of markets, uh, the issue of the black market is not just a market acquisition by the BSP, uh, but also of how the government cracks down on such illegal players. Now, increasing the number of credited buyers for all types of precious metals and minerals must be given due effort. Seems improving uh, the Bureau of Customs uh, capacity and capability to minimize smuggling includes strengthening partnerships with select sector stakeholders. We need supply chain support from government, which may improve material movement and monitoring. Value adding and uh, ancillary industry development support must be provided by government to prevent unwanted leakages, such as gold laundering. After setting the course of direction, we are now into answering the third and last critical question of the study, how to get there. Now, in the next final four slides, we shall cover our recommendations for a national research plan roadmap, and implementation strategy. An immediate need is a national research plan. Strategies uh, to develop and or improve current situations need to be based on facts. We must be uh, reminded that we cannot improve what we cannot measure. Thus, data sets, metrics must be agreed upon and a plan is needed on what or how to obtain such data and measure such, such metrics. A national research plan uh, can be guided by objectives that can provide a suggested approach for collecting and analyzing socioeconomic data regarding the Philippine small steel mining sector. Now, the proposed research topics based on a 2018 uh, document published by the United Nations uh, Institute for Training and Research uh, have nine main categories. We have demographic information. So these are the contents of a national research plan, the categories of data sets that are needed. And we need information and formality local government power dynamics, gold and mercury trade, mercury use, local development, women's role, children's role, and health information. Second, we need roadmaps, several, several interrelated roadmaps. As there are unique challenges for a geographical area, strategies may also be formulated even per region. Now, the approach will depend on the analysis of findings and, out and outputs for the National Research Plan. Now, it is a uh, 
it is expected that there will be several uh, key result areas or directions to take. Now, this list, of course, is not uh, as comprehensive as you want them to. Now, road mapping is a collective activity, so we leave it to the designated uh, task forces to, to complete the list. Uh, there have been announcements uh, made on small scale mining roadmap. It may, be a, it may be a mistake not to break down such roadmap into more manageable constituent roadmaps and strategies. Uh, the challenge here is how to coordinate uh, every, every activity uh, from a single office uh, that can champion SSM development. Last slide. Now, uh, implementation strategies. So, should stakeholder buy-in, and this is very important, uh, even during road mapping, uh, you need stakeholder buy-in. Uh, road maps, uh, again, is a collective activity. You should need, uh, you, should, you should have uh, as many stakeholders as possible during road mapping exercise. Uh, once stakeholder buy-in is obtained, uh, all throughout the road mapping and strategy formulation stages, implementation must roll out successfully. Uh, the main challenge would be building capacities. LGUs, MGB, uh, all other uh, government agencies. Now, implementation and coordination within multiple execution areas is not uh, an easy thing to do. And we need to continuously monitor progress, assess performance, react to resource, and craft uh, and implement sounder strategies to continuously improve the uh, eventual overall performance of the sector. Uh, this will be a cycle. Thus, the SSM Development Office, we recommend one, or uh, we call that office a champion, would need to act as a competent project management office, uh, doing major activities in a cycle. So, I guess, I guess uh, that's, that's it. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Over to you, uh, Sheila Gwen. Thank you very much, um, Engineer Pasqual. Um, for those of you who have questions, please park them for now because we still have one speaker. Uh, and if you already have questions, uh, feel free to type your question using our chat box. And this also goes to our uh, viewers of Facebook, just type your question using the comment uh, section of Facebook. Okay, at this point, if I may ask you, okay. Thank you very much, Engineer uh, uh, Pascual. So to give the perspective of the government on the issues and recommendations presented by our speaker, we invited the Director of uh, DNR's Mines and Geosciences Bureau, Attorney Wilfredo Moncano, and representing Attorney Moncano in our webinar this afternoon is Engineer uh, Dorico uh, Sandoval, uh, the Chief Chief of the Mining uh, Technology Division. Engineer uh, Sandoval obtained his master's degree in development uh, management as one of the government scholars under the Public Management Development Program at the Development Academy of the Philippines in 2015. He also obtained his master's degree in geology as scholar of the Department of Science and Technology in the National Institute of Geological Sciences, University of the Philippines in 2006. And uh, he obtained his bachelor's degree in mining engineering at the Mapua Institute of Technology in 1984. Here now is engineer uh, Ted Sandoval for his comments. Engineer Sandoval. Yes, uh, good afternoon, uh, ladies and uh, gentlemen. In behalf of the uh, MGB Director, uh, Director uh, Artong, Attorney Wilfredo G. Moncano, 
we wanted to uh, extend our gratitude to the Philippine Institute of Development Studies to be part of this uh, webinar. Uh, <clears throat> MGB uh, agrees on most of the findings of the studies on the uh, contributions of the uh, small-scale mining operators on the uh, identified critical issues that confronting the operators and the option for policy augmentations to uh, improve the performance and uh, enhance the positive impact of uh, small-scale mining studies. On the uh, issues of how to get there or on the recommendation with regards to the formalization, uh, MGB agrees on the directions that is stated on the uh, study, uh, such as the uh, national research plan with uh, full-scale registrations and the uh, complete uh, profiling and uh, formal inventory of the sector, as well as the uh, much needed uh, stakeholder uh, analysis. Currently, uh, the uh, Mines and Justice Bureau is uh, involved in the uh, implementations of one of the uh, foreign assisted project, which is the uh, uh, Global Environmental Facilities uh, uh, Gold Child Projects, which pertain, which, which, uh, um, pertain to the uh, contribution toward the eliminations of uh, mercury, the artisanal and small scale gold mining uh, sector. Uh, we're in one of the uh, uh, four identified intermediate component is the uh, formalization. And on this component, uh, the project will promote the formalizations of the uh, uh, small scale mining sector, uh, which uh, can be accomplished through building the capacities of the uh, relevant stakeholders and reviewing the existing relevant policies and regulations. And uh, MGB is also looking forward uh, probably next year for the uh, uh, another GF project for the uh, development of uh, national action plan in the uh, small scale mining. Now, with respect to the policy uh, augmentations on the recommendations, um, uh, MGB agrees on the uh, recommendations and aware on the uh, needed or need for the policy augmentation, especially on the amendment of the Republic Act uh, 1776, or the small scale mining laws of the Philippines. Uh, we're in redefining sector types, the uh, scale and cover rates, the equipment use and investment threshold, and as well as the, uh, as the uh, classification based on the commodities and byproducts including the structures of the uh, provincial or city mining regulatory board and other issues should be addressed. And in this direction, the uh, MGB provided uh, technical inputs on the proposed amendment of the uh, small scale mining law uh, during the uh, technical working, working group meeting on the uh, Committee on Natural Resources of the House of Representatives. And as mentioned earlier, um, in the GF Gold project, uh, uh, the uh, review of existing uh, relevant policies and regulations will uh, also be addressed. Uh, with regards to the uh, uh, policy implementation and enforcement, uh, MGB also agrees on the enhancement and uh, strict implementations of the uh, People's Small Scale Mining Program as indicated in uh, Republic Act 1776. Specifically, according to the plans and program committed as a small scale mining uh, contractor, such as the uh, importance of annual safety and health program, the uh, two year work uh, program, the community development and uh, management program, and the uh, potential environmental impact management plan and others. And uh, we also agreed on the uh, important harmonizations and recognize that there are some conflicting policies that uh, has to be addressed. And uh, further with respect to the uh, provisions of clarity, uh, MGB agrees on this and transparency on benefit sharing agreement in relation to taxes, royalties, 
uh, list that can be included in the needed amendment of uh, RA 776 and as well as to the uh, impositions of penalties or in particular uh, fines uh, whenever there is a uh, violation but depending on the degree of violation aside from the uh, current uh, penal sanctions in the uh, in the RA 776 of uh, those who will uh, violate the violators of the current small scale mining laws uh, will be uh, imprisoned for uh, not more than not less than six months but not more than six years with respect to the study on the inputs on impositions of regulatory bottlenecks with regard to strengthen manpower regulations and security for wage earners common laborers uh, we think that uh, this can be addressed by the department of labor and uh, employment of course uh, because, because this is of their uh, prime concern with respect to uh, our uh, the manpowers and laborers and on the uh, clarity limits of the neural instrument uh, for example those issues in those uh, issued in the mining uh, patent in the study. Uh, the patented claims are, uh, have the uh, perpetual right. Uh, however, uh, uh, it has to be, of course, uh, a matter of uh, uh, consulting the lawmaker on this. And uh, MGB is uh, looking on also on this matter on the legal aspect. On the consequences of requirements, uh, on the sequence, I mean, of requirements, uh, as per the uh, proposed amended uh, IRR of the uh, RA 7076, the ECC is required uh, before the uh, issuance of mining contract to uh, not, not uh, before the issuance of the clearance of the secretary to uh, further the streamlining of the process for the declarations of uh, Minahan Bayan. Uh, and uh, on the other hand, uh, with this, uh, MG MGB agrees on the uh, provision of support to uh, less prohibitive access to credit and mobilizations of government on financial institution to act as a mineral banks. And uh, as, as, as I mentioned earlier, in the uh, uh, component two of the GF project, uh, there, one of the components is the access on financial and investment for facilitating to finance the uh, uh, small-scale miners communities to enable them to produce uh, gold in a cleaner and more efficient way and to address the market access uh, for them. So, uh, and uh, with respect to the uh, uh, specific provisions of support to capacity and mineral asset inventory and augmentations. Uh, MGB agrees on this and uh, uh, the determinations of the volume of resource uh, through the conduct of explorations in the small scale mining area is of importance. And uh, since the conduct of exploration entails financial concern, uh, this can be included in the MGB uh, technical input in the proposed amendment of the uh, RA uh, 70, uh, 76. On the study inputs on impositions of regulatory bottlenecks with regards to operation on monitoring and enforcement in particular, under the uh, IRR of 776, the uh, provincial or city mining regulatory board, whose chairperson is the uh, MGB regional director with the uh, provincial governor or city mayor or his or her representative as member with one small scale mining, one large scale mining and one environmental non-government organization representative is responsible for monitoring and enforcement uh, in the small scale mining areas. And on the uh, input on establishment of source for the monitoring fund, uh, this was addressed actually uh, in the uh, in the uh, amended uh, IRR. And on the strengthening institutional enforcement, 
the uh, MGB Regional Office uh, conduct the deputations of law enforcement agency personnel and accredited civic organizations. On the uh, study input in on impositions of regulatory bottlenecks with regards to operation on processing plants in particular, some of the input was already addressed on the uh, proposed amendment of the uh, IRR, such as the uh, streamlining of the uh, uh, mineral processing uh, uh, permit or license application requirements. And uh, on this, the LGU will identify the mineral processing zone in their localities and the uh, uh, PCMRB through the uh, MGB regional office concern uh, will conduct assessment with regards to the sustainability of the area. And the on environmental compliance and disaster risk management on uh, tailings management, the uh, mine structural safety integrity assurance was uh, also included and addressed on the uh, amended, uh, a proposed amended uh, IRR of the uh, 7076. Lastly, on the uh, uh, inputs on impositions of uh, regulatory bottlenecks with regards to market, in RA 7076, uh, stated there that uh, all gold produced by small scale miners in any mineral shall be sold to the central bank or its duly authorized representative, which shall buy it at prices competitive to the prevailing in the world market, regardless of the volume of weight. And the central bank uh, shall establish as many as buying a station in gold rush area to fully service the requirement of the uh, small scale uh, uh, miners. However, one of the uh, limitations in the ground is the uh, on the establishment of many buying station by the central bank is the undetermined volume of our resource in the uh, small scale mining areas in relations to economics and one of the input of this study can be uh, one of the input from this study can address uh, this uh, of course the uh, needed provisions of support for capacity and mineral asset inventory um, and augmentation in small scale mining sector. Through, again, to the conduct of uh, what I have mentioned earlier of uh, exploration, uh, which entail, of course, uh, financial uh, uh, capacity. And uh, lastly, on the uh, input of the value adding into jewelry industry. Uh, um, we, we think it can be included on the uh, proposed amendment of 7076, uh, so, uh, um, which is, of course, uh, uh, will be uh, decided by our uh, lawmakers. So uh, that's all, and uh, thank you very much, and good afternoon. Thank you very much, um, Engineer Sandoval. Uh... We are delighted to hear your, your comments, and especially the actions that have been taken so far by um, the Mines and Geosciences Bureau to um, on to the issues uh, in the uh, small scale mining sector. Okay, so before we go to the open forum, um, let us have a poll. And this poll is about the provincial or city Mines Regulatory Board, which was also part of uh, the presentation of uh, Engineer Pascual, as uh, he mentioned in his presentation, right now it is composed of the regional director of the MGBS chairperson, the provincial governor or city mayor um, as member, one small scale mining representative as member, one large scale mining representative, and an NGO representative. And he even mentioned that. Uh, um, the, uh, the regional director of the MGB, the uh, provincial governor, and the city mayor have a high degree of in influence in, in the board and in the um, monitoring and implementation of small scale mining operations um, on the ground. So, um, we'd like to know your thoughts on whether there is a need to um, reconstitute the composition of these. Um, 
uh, provincial or city uh, uh, mining mines regulatory board so that it would it, it would include members or stakeholders from uh, uh, from other sectors um, specifically those who are directly involved in developing the mining sector which currently are not part of the P or PCMRB. So do you think there is a need to revisit the composition of the uh, mines regulatory board at the provincial or city level? So know us what um, tell us what you think by joining our poll on the question. Should the government reconstitute the composition of the provincial or city mining regulatory board? Okay, so yes or no. We will reveal the results of this poll before the end of the webinar. Okay, so let us now proceed with our open forum and uh, we are now ready to entertain your questions. And for our Q&A, um, we have Engineer Pascual and Engineer Sandoval, and we will also be joined by um, Dr. Sani uh, Domingo um, of PIDS, Director of the Mining Research Project presented by Engineer Pascual. Okay. Gentlemen, uh, could you please uh, turn on your um, video so that our audience can see you? Engineer Pascual, Engineer Sandoval, and uh, Dr. Domingo, please. Okay. Sunny, are you there? Thank you very much. Okay. Great. Okay, let us have our uh, first question from one of our um, Facebook, uh, no, from, from one experts. Okay, and uh, this one, okay, I'm, I'm, uh, okay, please hold. Uh huh. Okay, let me start um, asking the first question just to start the ball rolling. And this one is for um, Engineer Sandoval, although Asani and uh, Engineer Pascual can also uh, give their uh, thoughts. Um, and this concerns the People's Small Scale uh, Mining Act, which created the People's Small Scale Mining Protection Fund. So um, as, as um, the law states, it provides 50% of the national government share of the internal revenue tax or production share uh, due the government for use in information dissemination and training of small scale miners on safety, health and environment, environmental protection and establishment of the mine rescue and regular, uh, recovery teams, including procurement of rescue equipment necessary in cases of emergency, such as landslides, tunnel collapse or the like. So, engineer um, Sandoval, what have you seen so, so far? On the ground, is this fund being used for its intended purpose, and is it helping small miners? Engineer Sandoval. Yes, uh, uh, on the ground, it is the uh, responsibility of the uh, PMRB, uh, wherein the uh, regional director is, uh, is the same person of it, and with its member to uh, monitor, of course, the uh, implementations of these. Uh, uh, of this uh, fund, no, uh, with respect to the uh, to the uh, uh, concerns that uh, had been mentioned uh, earlier. Okay, but would you have any information as to how it is being used on the ground? Since uh, okay, uh, the regional director of the Mines and Geosciences Sciences Bureau is the chair of the uh, uh, provincial or city mines regulatory board. Engineer Sandoval? Sir, could you please turn on your microphone? We cannot hear you, sir. Sorry. Okay. Uh, the, uh, actually, the uh, Environmental Protection Fund is uh, uh, important, of course, uh, with respect to uh, uh, on the ground uh, situation, as has been uh, mentioned earlier, and um, uh, uh, the uh, use of it is dependent on uh, on uh, what is uh, needed in the area, uh, which has uh, uh, to be uh, um, not uh, approved and uh, monitored, no, 
on its implementations by the uh, uh, PMRB with respect to the uh, uh, or in, with consultations to the uh, of course with the uh, surrounding or what we call the host uh, host and neighboring communities in the area. Okay, thank you, um, Engineer Sotobal. Uh, okay, um, let us take some questions from our WebEx uh, participants. And this one is from Michael Bortolazo. And um, um, Engineer Pascual and Dr. Domingo, uh, may I request you to uh, answer this? Uh, she said, with the many recommendations in the paper or in the presentation, which do you, which do you think should be prioritized by the government given our uh, current limited resources. Uh, may I ask first uh, the the, um, the thoughts of uh, Dr. Domingo on this? Okay, uh, thank you, Sheila. Thank you for that question. Um, but for answering that, thank you to Ludwig for being presented the results of our study presentation. Thank you for. Uh, the reaction of Engineer uh, Sandoval, uh, very detailed in terms of uh, DNA's position on this. Now, to answer the question, really to down the, the major issue of scale mining in the Philippines, it really boils down to questions of formality and illegality of mining operations. You go in the Anywhere you go where there is small scale mining, there is informality, there is legality in terms of them grounding activities, in terms of them be also being monitored by people on the ground. So addressing informality really I think is the biggest challenge and probably one of the best options for us moving forward. Now, how do we do this? Uh, number one, the current policy that we have uh, with 7076 doesn't really conform to our desire to formalize the sector. Because number one, the mere definition of small scale mining in that law doesn't uh, jive with what we see on the ground. Small scale mining in the Philippines, if you, for example, go to the major small, small scale mining towns in, in the country, you'll see that there are operators with hundreds of uh, laborers operating by shift every day, 24 hours, seven days a week. Imagine the, the amount of produce that they, they have in a week or in a month or even a year. And much of these uh, outputs are not being monitored by the national government. So we are not capturing the benefits from much of the outputs from the small scale subsector in mining. So I guess number one, looking at the current policy, we need to really augment the provisions in it. 7076 has served this purpose uh, to the artisanal type of small-scale small mining. And right now we have to upgrade our view on, on small-scale mining, really just to number one, capture the benefits, number two, protect the workers, the small workers, the small laborers, working within the mines, and probably number three, allow the government to impose some sort of uh, regulatory backbone uh, in the subsector. Uh, the easiest way forward probably is for us to capitalize on existing regulatory frameworks. No? So probably it will take years for us to come up uh, seven or a revised small-scale uh, mining app. It may take years because you have to have champions in, in both houses of Congress. But really right now, moving forward, we can capitalize on existing regulatory policies. Uh, small-scale mining, especially those dealing with gold, silver, the metallics, no, cannot really prosper without the processing uh, component. Because they cannot really sell ores. They have to sell for the silver or the chromite. They have to sell uh, a semi-finished produce. And really, if we want to impose 
regulatory uh, teeth, we go to the uh, mineral processing plants that we have in the localities. Other LGUs with very strong LCE uh, impositions, no? with very strong impositions from the local government. Um, so that's one. Number two, we have to regulate in terms of protecting the local workers. And that includes imposing uh, provisions in the labor code. So right now, what we have in the small scale mining subsector are probably invisible workers. We don't have a very comprehensive demographic profile of small scale operations in the country. And that includes the number of people working within the mines. That includes their characteristics, the households that they have, how long have they been uh, doing work within the small, small scale. We need profiles. We need to profile the subsector for us to better understand uh, how to address certain issues or gaps. Number three, processing plants cannot operate without the use of chemicals. And we have string regulations regard to hazard. We just have to impose that. Number four, small scale mines use explosives. And really that alone, if you're going to be very serious, they cannot use explosives without getting attention from the local uh, law enforcers, the PNP as well as the AFP. So heavy explosions, for example, in the hinterlands, you know, in the uplands, probably would, would catch the attention of our a AFP operators, or even the PNP within towns and cities. So just having those probably very groundable uh, local regulations and policies would be a practical way of, of moving forward. Okay. okay. Thank you, Sunny. You you mentioned that uh, the use of explosives in small scale mining, no? but uh, by the very definition uh, mentioned by uh, Engineer Pascual, it's it's illegal. Although people continue, yes, it's not allowed. <laughs> okay, so not only that, even the use of heavy equipment, modern technology, that's right. it's not really within mm -hmm. the law. So redefining okay. small scale mining in the law, that's right. Really, I guess, the best big step that we have that's right really capture benefits mm -hmm. to really formalize the mm -hmm. and i guess that's right to mm -hmm. have a legal uh mining setup mm -hmm. in the small mm -hmm. scale and engineer uh sandoval is is uh, redefining or uh, revisiting the the definition of small scale mining already underway uh is this uh in the plan of uh, the uh, uh, MGB, yeah, actually, one of the uh, one of the uh, input that uh, MGB uh, uh, made uh, on the uh, technical working group on the uh, Committee on Natural Resources on the House of Representatives, with respect to the uh, amendment of uh, RA seventy seventy six, is the uh, differentiations between the uh, artisanal uh and the uh small scale uh because in, the, the philippines actually is totally different with the uh with the artisanal with the, what we call the uh artisanal small scale mining in other countries uh because in the philippines uh the uh occurrence of our uh deposits actually uh there are there are occurrence of deposits that uh uh, uh can be uh mined and it can only be mined in a small scale mining basis uh, uh, with respect to this geologic setting, for example, the, uh, the shallow deposits, uh, which entails the uh, use of explosive because of the uh, surrounding hard rocks. Uh, so uh, uh, so uh, the, uh, one of the input of the MGB uh, to the uh, 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 to be proposed uh, amendment or either on the uh, bill that had been proposed before, as I mentioned in this study, is the depreciation, a clear, a clear separation between the, uh, the artisanal and the uh, small scale mining uh, that uh, has been uh, existing uh, right now in our countries. Oh, 
question. And this one is from uh, Director Nieva Natural of NEDA. And she asks, if we formalize or legalize small-scale mining, which government agency will take the lead? At the local level, LGUs can help by treating this as a business or enterprise provided um, environmental clearances have been secured. Um, perhaps we can ask first uh, Engineer Sandoval. Did you catch the question, sir? Can you repeat again? Okay, sir. Uh, this question is from um, Director Nieva Natural of NEDA, and it's about formalizing or legalizing small-scale mining. And she's asking if this if um, this will take place, which government agency sh uh, should take the lead? At the local level, LGUs can help by treating this as a business or enterprise provided environmental clearances have been secured. Because right now you have those uh, PC MRDs, yeah, right? Correct. Which is correct. a task to uh, monitor, task to uh, um, implement the policies on the ground. So do you think it should be the same, the same body? Yes, uh, mm -hmm. actually, uh, it should be the same body as uh, being uh, stated in the uh, in the uh, IRR of 7076. Uh, uh, because on this, uh, it is there where, where uh, the uh, the uh, two laws meet, no, with the with respect to the uh, Republic Act and the uh, the local government code. So uh, um, the uh, the uh, on part of the MGB is mostly uh, on the uh, technical aspects, and uh, uh, they are the uh, uh, ready. Uh, uh, they are ready on the uh, contributions of any uh, uh, technical that is needed with the respect to the PMRB. And uh, we're in one of each member is the uh, either the uh, governor or the uh, city mayor and with each uh, representative from the uh, uh, three different sectors that uh, had been mentioned earlier, well, which uh, been uh, there uh, so that the uh, any issue can be can be uh, uh, address actually in a multi-sector uh, uh, level. Okay, thank you very much, Engineer Sandoval. We have uh, um, a question also related to the PCMRB, and this one is from one of our Facebook viewers, Chadwick Golamos. Sabi niya, PCMRB in some areas are not convened by the concerned uh, local chief executives. Uh, does MGB undertake a health check of the PCMRBs in the country? Sino po ba ang nagmo-monitor sa mga PCMRBs natin? Is this part of the function of the uh, Mines and Geosciences Bureau? Kasi ang share niya sa regional of ay yung regional director ba, di ba, ng, ng MGB sa baba? Sino po ang nagmo-monitor ng ating mga PCMRB? Actually, uh, the secretary itself, based on the uh, IRR, is the one who is uh, in charge, monitoring actually the uh, the uh, existence or even the uh, if there's a need for the recompos recomposition, for example, reconstitutions of the PMRB. Uh, for example, uh, there will be an election, so uh, of course uh, there will be changes in the local level. So uh, the procedure is that uh, they have the regional office. Uh, will uh, as a chair of the PMRB uh, has to uh, of course uh, to uh, monitor the uh, the uh, PMRB itself uh, on the compliance of this. So uh, the uh, the even the reconstitutions of the uh, PCMRB or I uh, is uh, being uh, monitored uh, from the regional level to the central office and then. Uh, as I said, to the level of the secretary, because he's the one who will who will uh, approve the uh, reconstitutions of the uh, uh, PCMRB. Okay, thank you very much, um, Engineer Sandoval. Uh, let's entertain um, again a question from our Facebook viewer viewers, and this one is from Aguila Means Chaz. Uh, no, this one is from Minerva Chaloping March. Uh, and she is watching from Melbourne. And if uh, you may ask, um, you may uh, respond to this, uh, Engineer Pascual. Uh, according to uh, Minerva, 
Um, her research has been in the Cordillera, particularly Itogon and Tuba and parts of Mancayan. And my, uh, my question is about the lack of attention paid by the study on existing traditional institutions as a key structure in managing or regulating small scale mining. Engineer Lupe, would you like to comment on that? Uh, is she questioning the lack of, uh, of local, local uh, influence on, on regulating the small scale mining sector? If she's asking if they are included, sir, in the study, those traditional structures. Uh, okay. Well, the study touched on uh, traditional artisanal mining, traditional mm -hmm. being done by uh, uh, indigenous peoples in in the Cordilleras. Mm -hmm. It the study mentions uh, some of these uh, uh, practices. No? Okay. These are unique practices. Uh, if mm -hmm. you find them in the Cordilleras, uh, you can find them in Mindanao. Okay. So the study did not attempt to expound on it. No, it just okay. meant there are uh, traditional mining methods okay. in the Cordilleras, and mm -hmm. I think the, the local government uh, allows them to to uh, practice uh, still practice those those kind of mining methods. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. The National uh, Commission on uh, Indigenous People. Uh, there was one study they they did, and they were encouraging this these practices. Another uh, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. artisanal uh, mining method. Okay. Thank you, um, Sunny. Would you like to add to that? Yes. Yes, Sheila. Um, I think if you go, for example, car, no? uh, car were in, there is a very strong presence of the IP community, given that around 90% of the population within the region are IPs. No? You have a sense that they are actually imposing their will in terms of small scale mining operations, no? sub legally, probably. Number one, uh, any legal operation has to have an FPIC, their expressed oh. consent. Before yes, they can operate consent. within ancestral domains. Mm -hmm. you know? So, if mm -hmm. everything is legal, they have to have that. Yeah. Fortunately, a mm -hmm. lot of the uh, small scale mining operations are not, uh, are not that legal, are not that formal, and therefore they mm -hmm. skirt in so many ways that very basic requirement. But for, for CAR, yeah, very good traditional mechanisms were in the impose, the local tradition, the local process and uh, the will of uh, the 90 percent IP community within that region it's not the same in other uh, areas in the there is less uh, imposition on the part of the IP community thank you, Sheila. Mm -hmm. thank you very much uh, Sunny and um, engineer Pascual okay um our next question is from um uh, Okay, Michelle Esperanza, and he, she asked, given that LGUs have high influence in the engagement of, um, in the implementation or conduct of small scale mining, what administrative legislations pose a hinge runs to policy augmentation, specifically to the jurisdiction of uh, LGUs? Would you have any, uh, Thoughts on this, uh, Sunny or Engineer Pascual, based on uh, the study that you conducted? Engineer Pascual? Uh, the local government code uh, specifies the extent of uh, the local government unit uh, on, on how they, uh, they're not into regulation. So what is specifically stated on the uh, local government code is that they can promote small-scale mining. I think that's where it starts. Mm -hmm. Regulation, uh, the 
CNR or MGB. So now, if you ask the local government, if they do some regulation work, they don't. But they are uh, they are the agencies nearest to to this uh, group, you know. So that's one area wherein uh, they feel. Uh, I think most of the, a lot of them feel that uh, they must do more in that. Okay, Sunny, yes, please. Your thoughts on this? Yes, Sheila. Uh, talking about LGUs, now, before we did the study, we actually thought that it's the LGUs that are controlling small scale mining operations in the country. They have been supposedly regulating small scale mining. But really, just looking at the structure of the PMRB, it's still MGB that's sharing that very powerful body within the local uh, within the localities. No? But still going around, we find very good um, LGUs with, I think, very proactive LCEs, the mayors, the governors, no? imposing their political uh -huh. in their political bounds. No? And for example, in in Bicol, they have an oversight function in terms of the processing uh, of uh, gold ores okay. mined in their localities. Mm -hmm. And I guess just looking at that, you control almost all because you can't move actual products without going through the mineral processing plants. So I guess that's mm -hmm. a very good uh, avenue where, wherein we can impose regulatory bottlenecks, you know, as mentioned that's by. Right. So, in, mm -hmm. in mineral processing plants, we can actually um, have an inventory of the outputs, uh, small-scale mining-wise, within within the localities. You know? That's number one, and probably we can tag them for for taxing or other benefit uh, tagging, which we probably uh, very much lack right now. We have mm -hmm. BSP supposedly mandated to buy all the the gold produced from, from small-scale mining. But as Ludwig presented earlier, they capture a very, very small amount of the actual coal produced within the country. 0.33 metric tons in 2018 compared to 100 plus being tagged by, by Hong Kong as mm -hmm. the amount going outside the country. So it's very evident that we are not capturing the mining. And just the anecdotal evidence that around 70% 75% of the actual mining produce that we have uh, are supposedly coming from small scale mining in the country. That's a huge amount of money. That's billions of pesos being lost through the black market. So mm -hmm. local governments, although they are not structurally, uh, I think, empowered to regulate, even that EMRB is, is still chaired by MGB. And it's still the, the secretary that has the power to, to clear or approve the designations of uh, Minhang Bayans, no? they still have that very good uh, position to actually political cloud within their jurisdictions and regulate small-scale mining. Mm -hmm. uh, Sunny, uh, Engineer Ludwig, no? given the current composition of the PCMRB, you know, uh, do you think it provides a, a conducive, a really conducive environment for rent-seeking activities? Kapalagay Kasi... I mean, wala na representation ng ibang stakeholders. I, I wouldn't want to, Chile, I wouldn't want to... Uh, Sorry, am I, am I rocking yeah. the boat? To express a very sensitive opinion on that. Yeah. But, really, okay. but really, we have certain issues within the subsector. And it doesn't just point to regulatory bodies. We have uh, going around in all the domain, but everything is yes. we don't have documentary evidence to actually say that uh, mm -hmm. we have but there are attempts to actually okay. formalize and then capture such benefits come i saw uh, engineer sandoval raising his hand sir please go ahead Sir, your microphone, please turn it on. Uh, yes, uh, with respect to the uh, inclusions of the other stakeholders, like uh, example 
uh, the, uh, the the NCI, the IP's representative and others, uh, the the the, the uh, PMRB can can make a uh, a policy actually uh, to for to uh, cater the uh, this uh, sector as an observer, quote unquote, no? so that uh, it will not it will not of course. Uh, it will be compliance uh, with the uh, national uh, with the national law. So it is there uh, that uh, they can be uh, uh, they can be heard actually as uh, observer. Uh, so uh, I think it will help not to address uh, this uh, issue on uh, the uh, PMRB. Okay, thank you very much, gentlemen. Uh, we have a very interesting question from um, uh, one of our participants on uh, Webex, and this is from Carmelita Martinez, and she's asking how we can address child labor in the small scale mining sector. Um, engineer uh, Sandoval, any thoughts on how we can address small um, child labor in the sector? Actually, the, the laws is very clear that uh, there be, there should be no child labor. Actually, the AIDS, uh, the cut of AIDS, uh, with uh, respect to the uh, those who are qualified to be employed in the uh, mineral industry from large scale to small scale is uh, uh, 18 and above. Uh, so that that is what the uh, labor law says, and uh, that should be complied. Um, but uh, it is really unfortunate that there are uh, some, also, still some existing uh, child labor, and uh, it had actually it, it is been uh, uh, it's been tried to be addressed uh, by uh, some of the uh, projects actually before, uh, as I remember the uh, one of the projects is the uh, with respect to the uh, partnership with the Bantok Six, of course. Uh, so uh, I think it is the, uh, of course, it is on the LGU, uh, uh, of course, uh, who will be, who should be responsible on the, uh, on the uh, uh, precincts of these uh, uh, child labors in their uh, locality so that it can be addressed because the law is very clear actually uh, that uh, there should be no child labor uh, with respect to the uh, uh, small scale mining. Thank you very much for that, um, Engineer Ted. Um, okay, let's entertain more questions from our uh, WebEx uh, viewers. Um, okay, and this one is from Liz Aren Peña Flor. What are your recommendations to resolve the legality of sources of ore when the when the small when small scale mining has conflicts with large scale mining owners, any thoughts on this, um, gentlemen? Any of you? But perhaps uh, engineer Sandoval can can better respond to this. Yes, it is always a matter of uh, who has the uh, legal the permit, no? The uh, the legal personality, of course. Uh, that is one of the important uh, conditions uh, so that uh, the, this issue should be uh, resolved uh, as long as uh, it is it came from a legal source it can be easily uh, resolved and if it's been identified that the uh, source is uh, illegally taken of course uh, uh, it should be uh, uh, confiscated and uh, so uh, uh, what's really important is uh, what is the uh, the source of this uh, uh, mineral uh, deposit, like for example, gold? Is it is this taken from, uh, for example, is this taken uh, legally or uh, or uh, or uh, or illegally? Okay, Sunny, please. Yes, Sheila. I think that's a very uh, Pressing con uh, there are conflicts in terms of us legalizing, for example, the source of uh, small scale mining produce. We have uh, cases where in small scale miners operate like Potogon Benguet, where BSP sources most of its gold uh, buying, I guess, legally, supposedly. But uh, if you operate, for example, if a small-scale miner operates within uh, 
the confines of uh, the concessions of large scale mining corporations and then the large scale mi mining corporations uh, impose their regulatory will on those small scale miners you still have a very illegal setup so i think mm -hmm. that's a very uh, question that we have to address policy wise and mm -hmm. even grounding because right now if we ground policy what they have is an illegal uh, transaction between the small scale miner and the large scale miner who has to jurisdiction within that company. Okay, thank you very much, Sunny. Okay, let's um, have another question from our WebEx uh, participants. This one is from Ron Residoro of the Chamber of Mines. How do we address the involvement of politically exposed Persons in SSM, many SSMs operate with impunity, avoiding compliance with environmental and technical regulations because they are protected by local politicians. Um, Engineer Sandoval, any thoughts on this? Actually, that is one of the challenges, uh, actually, that uh, up, up to present uh, uh, has been facing the, uh, the government. Uh, uh, of course, uh, there are a lot of times that uh, uh, there's a lot of attempt to, uh, of course, to address uh, this. But uh, until now, we, we uh, recognize that it's, this is one of the uh, uh, challenges, of course, uh, uh, with respect to the uh, influence, not only by the politicians, actually, but even uh, uh, by some sector, actually. Uh, that uh, should not be uh, there uh, with respect, of course, to the uh, um, to the uh, small scale mining. Okay, thank you, um, Sunny. Please. Yep, that is probably very difficult to stop, given that most of our mining operations are illegal in the first place. So yeah, you have yeah. that opening for scrupulous uh, individuals within the LGs because you have that very big gap in terms of formalization to address the formalization yeah. issue and probably we can impose proper uh, regulatory frameworks on our small scale mining. Mm -hmm. And obviously um, in in the the regulatory body at the local level on the ground you have the politician there right in the PCMRB it's either the, the mayor or the, the governor so yeah Okay, Engineer Pascual. If you ask me, frankly, you can uh, stop it. Uh, Mr. Residoro was asking maybe probably from, from the point of view of a large scale miner. Mm -hmm. We have, if the small scale miner is legal and they're sitting on top of, uh, for example, there's a, there's a, uh, uh, declared minimum by an area on top of that uh, large scale mining tenement. But still a problem for the large scale miner. So, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. in there are several uh, areas within maybe the barangay captain or the mayor, part of the small scale mining group. And it's something I don't think even MGB would like to touch. It, it's it's like, that's, that's what it is. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay, thank you, Engineer Plus Pascual. Uh, this next question is for both uh, Sunny, for both Dr. Domingo and uh, and uh, Dr. Uh, Engineer Pascual, because it, this concerns the the how the study was conducted. The question is from Buenaventura Maata Jr. This is a very interesting study. My concern is to know the details of the data gathering methods and the statistical prioritization of the issues and concerns because we cannot take action. Uh, to all the issues because of funding limitations, or even ask the SSM, the small scale miners to improve on their inadequacies because it is expensive to do improvements. So please give us the statistical details of the indicators of the issues you presented so that we can focus our concrete actions. Uh, is this data available? Do you, for, do you further explain? Can you further explain the data gathering techniques and st statistical procedures? Um, and how you how you came up with the prioritized issues because all the issues are already existing for quite some time. Does this indicate that the mining stakeholders did not do anything about the problems or issues? 
Sunny, first you may want to uh, comment on this. And then I'll go to, uh, we, can, we can go to uh, Junior Pascual after you. Yes, Sheila. At the very start, we grappled with the issue of evidence. There is no mm. data set referring to the small-scale mining operations in the country, at least not comprehensive one. Even the output from that subsector uh, is missing. BSP has its own tally of gold buys, but it's a very small fraction of the actual produce from the subsector. So we went forward with a very qualitative approach. So we we did case studies in mining operations in, in several regions in the country, representing different types of structural arrangements between um, the operators, the financiers, and even the, the local laborer uh, or the local wage earners, the workers, the small ones. So we tried as much as possible to capture representation within that subsector. But if you're going to talk about numbers, that's probably one of the recommendations that we need. We, for one, advocate for a very good census of that subsector. And that's the only way we can protect, for example, the small workers mining those uh, small scale mines that we have in the countryside. So very qualitative in terms of our approach, but we try to get as much numbers as we can. That's why Ludwig has that uh, very general presentation of Hong Kong actually tagging 1,000 plus uh, metric tons, no? 100 plus thousand metric tons uh, going outside the country. When in fact we just uh, tag around 0.33 within BSP. So mm -hmm. that's my answer. Probably Ludwig has uh, something to add there. Yes, um, engineer yeah. Ludwig, please. Yeah. Well, this study did not attempt to uh, to conduct a nationwide person data gathering uh, activity. Uh, so what we did, we have case studies, four case studies, and I think the study shows uh, well where we are not where we are now, and this it shows that in those four different case studies. Uh, even though if you if you if you do your own research of coming up with a number, uh, you will have different uh, different uh, data data sets uh, metrics or performance metrics uh, with regard to small small scale mining operations in that region or in that mm -hmm. province. So what it's showing is that if you are going to do a national research. Uh, you have to do it, of course, you have to do it uh, on the level like uh, community level, uh, barangay level, and then municipal level, up to the regional level. Then we teach them all up. I mean, you cannot, you cannot design a national research plan uh, without, without uh, considering that you have a different context on a different municipality. So, for example, even the stakeholder analysis. Uh, you might think of uh, getting most of your data from a certain stakeholder, which in a certain uh, region, it's not the stakeholder that, it's not the same stakeholder that has much mm -hmm. influence on the mining operation. So we have different contexts, so it has to be designed uh, differently. That's what mm -hmm. we show. And it's, it's like saying you don't do a national research plan just sitting on, on your behind your your desk in your, in your office now you, you have to go uh, you have to go to communities you know the local context thank you engineer pasqual okay let's uh, entertain more questions and this one is from joseph um solis alcaide uh, alberizzi okay do you think we should you think uh, we should allow foreign direct investment participation in small scale mining through a constitutional amendment? Sunny? Uh, for large scale mining, it's happening now. Although, although yes. it's supposedly a Yeah, ruling by the Supreme Court allowing uh, uh, 
something like that, an arrangement between a foreign entity operating within mm -hmm. our locality in terms of mining. For small-scale mining, we have informal uh, foreign intrusion. <laughs> you know, okay. it's, it's, it's funny, going around, for example, you find so many cases where in the buyers are Chinese or foreigners. Okay. Mm -hmm. So that's that's that was very shocking on our part when we actually got that information from our stakeholders. And um, so right now, informally, we have foreign infusion of resource in small-scale mining. But everything is mm -hmm, not mm -hmm. captured. So mm -hmm. um, everything right now, I guess, is being lost through that black market setup. That we have. So oh yeah. The financiers funds uh, uh, the financier funds the the local operator. The operator hires so many uh, small workers, laborers, you no, know, to actually dig and go into the mines. Mm -hmm. And then the produce is processed in mineral processing plants, and the actual output there, actually, most of those go through the black market and it's not the black market in terms of benefits mm -hmm. so yeah and that's lost revenues for the country mm -hmm. no definitely mm -hmm. money circulates within communities and that's still also captured so even yeah 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 of the local workers probably has to be uh profiled because we don't have mm -hmm. them so we have a lot of gaps when it comes to the small scale mining subsector and really just us looking uh in a more comprehensive way at the demographic, yeah. uh, demographic information of uh, the operators, the workers working behind in the shell. We need yeah, to have yeah. those to actually come up with a sensible national plan, as, as Ludwig mentioned earlier. Yeah. Yeah, very well said, Sonia. And, and even in the presentation of uh, um, Engineer Ludwig, uh, he showed us a slide, I think that's slide nine, which shows that yung HK import data. Um, it, the uh, difference of that between yung uh, BSP gold purchases, gold production from LSM, ang laki ano, <laughs> ang laki nung ang laki nung difference. So makikita mo, so yeah, a lot of uh, less revenues for the country from from SSM hindi nakakapture kasi nga because of the high informality in, in this sector, and uh, also the, the workers because. But matas yung informality hindi nila sila protected, no? They are also not uh, covered by our social protection programs. Tama ba sani? Right, uh, Sheila. Probably the government has its own uh, shortcomings. For example, in 2010, mm -hmm. we tried to get as much uh, inputs from from the subsector because we tried to impose taxes. To so before they weren't taxing uh, the gold that they were buying. And in 2010, mm -hmm. uh, when the administration of President Aquino came in, they tried to, to impose taxes on gold buys. And okay. immediately, the amount of uh, gold being bought by BSP uh, went down. Uh -huh. And uh, for so many years, I think we did not act on that. So we have so many losses uh, because of our probably our, our uh, negligence. So we could have on, on the falling buying rate of BSP and try to uh, provide intervention so that we can regain back the market for small-scale mining output. But uh, it's just recently that uh, we have a new policy. You know, BSP yeah. right now can actually buy without taxes. So without hopefully taxes. We, can, uh -oh. we can port back the mm -mm. small-scale uh, mineral sellers and ha have their outputs. Uh, go to proper legal channels through BS. That's right. That is a very good move. Yes. Um, engineers and Dobal, you were raising your hand. Would Would you like to add to that? Actually, uh, it has already been mentioned by Dr. Sani. Uh, it It is on the uh, recent uh, Republic Act 11256 that was issued on March 2019 uh, that mm -hmm. uh, exempts no the uh, small scale miners on the uh, excise tax and income tax, uh, which uh, uh, had uh as he mentioned before and uh also uh, uh it is recognizable that during the time that uh, uh there is an imposition of tax uh this is one of the reasons of the significant decline of the sales of gold to the uh, central bank and so uh, this is the reason why uh, uh i think uh, the uh, the ra has been issued to uh, again to entice the uh small scale miners no 
uh, to, uh, of course, to sell it to, uh, to the uh, central bank. Thank you. Thank you, Engineer Sandoval. Maybe you can also answer this next question, and this one is from uh, Liz Aren Peñaflor of Fisher DOSD. Because of course we have R and D funds, ano? Yung R and D ba R and D funds uh, ba na access ito ng ating uh, mining uh, industry for the development of the sector? Actually, there are there are some projects in different uh, in in different regions that have been pioneered by the uh, DOST uh, in collaboration, I think, with the uh, academe, and uh, it's been piloted. And uh, uh, to uh, make the story short, the uh, the, the uh, out output actually uh, with respect to the recovery of gold is not uh, as equal. Uh, a significant in what our small scale miners can uh, recover uh, uh, because uh, in the uh, custom mill that uh, the uh, the small scale miner can uh, can uh, uh, construct actually uh, they, they, they they can uh, recover as, as higher as a more than 90 percent uh, recovery while uh, I think on what had been piloted uh, during the uh, this 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 project of the DOST, uh, I think uh, the the recovery is just about uh, I think it's just about range of eighty percent. So of course the small scale miner is always looking for uh, the higher uh, recovery. Uh, so uh, uh, I think uh, th this project has to be uh, improved. Uh, and uh, uh, since the some of the facilities has been already uh, um, been installed, so I think the next step is to uh, look on uh, how to uh, increase the efficiency of the recovery from these uh, facilities that had been uh, uh, developed through the uh, fund from the DOST. Thank you, Engineer Sandoval. Okay, our next question is from uh, Carmelita. Carmelita Martinez, um, ang sabi niya, will the SSM be subjected to performance audit? Like, like, like uh, I, I think she's comparing with um, uh, large-scale mining. nag undergo ba sila ng performance audit? Uh, Engineer Pascual, did you see this in your study? I think there is a similar, similar to... Uh, auditing large scale mines uh, the, the mgb i think uh, busted uh, you have uh, the mgb does monitoring of these small scale mines uh, in similar uh, the similar way that you do the large scale mine mm -hmm. engineer ted uh, yes uh, as i mentioned earlier it is the uh, uh, the PMRB, which uh, conducts the uh, monitoring or uh, of the uh, small scale mining of the legal small scale mining with respect to their uh, uh, environmental program, the community uh, and management development program, and even the, the uh, annual safety and health program and others, uh, of course, uh, including those of mineral processing. And since the uh, regional director is the chair of this, uh, of course, uh, the reports was uh, been uh, uh, provided to the regional office, and uh, uh, it is there that uh, we we uh, we get actually the the the, the data uh, uh, on uh, the output of the monitoring that has been conducted. Again. Uh, uh, MGB is there to provide the, uh, the technical expertise, and uh, it is the reason why we are there, of course, to provide to the uh, to the board the needed technical expertise, uh, uh, including the uh, compliance uh, monitoring of the uh, uh, small scale miners. Okay, thank you very much. We have uh, a very interesting question from Richard Emerson Ballester. And he asks, how do we resolve the trade-off between maintaining a pristine natural environment, which gives higher and longer economic value, and the negative externalities of mining? And uh, second, how, how do we reduce the size of the black market on small-scale mining, which is also a concern of Annabel Publico, 
uh, she asked uh, what steps have been made in coordination with the Bureau with the uh, Bureau of Customs um, so far to uh, curb uh, gold smuggling in the country. Uh, let's, may I ask uh, Sunny first on his thoughts, uh, on his uh, response to uh, the first question, resolving the trade up between, uh, you know, uh, environmental and uh, economic objectives, you know, the, the, this uh, really uh, hard balancing act that the government must uh, do. Yes, you're right, uh, Sheila. Now, that question really uh, was asked um, when we were looking at large-scale mines. It was very okay. evident that uh, the impact uh, in terms of ecological integrity of those operating mines were, were uh, very visible in the communities around. Although they benefit economically through uh, employment and certain... Uh, social development programs within the communities. Now, they benefit, but they see the damages in their environment. So for large-scale mines, it's quite uh, probably straightforward to, to answer that question. Number one, because there are um, regulatory mechanisms wherein we look at uh, their operations, violating the provisions of the agreements that they have with the government. You know? Uh, unlike with the small-scale mines, with the small-scale mines with the prevalence of informality and illegal operations, it's quite difficult for us to actually have a sense of balance. Uh, mm -hmm. Number one, because we don't know what's happening. Really, Sandoval mentioned that uh, it's a PMRD, uh, actually with the mandate to look, to look uh, around then and from monitor and assess the operations of small-scale mines. Unfortunately, there are so many security issues with regard to that function. And a lot of the local people that we talked to were afraid uh, to actually man and, uh, and regulate uh, existing small mines in the hinterlands. So uh, mm -hmm. question as to how do we balance environmental impact and economic benefits, I guess um, right now there's no straightforward answer to that. Um, That's right. The localities probably benefit because of uh, supposedly invisible employment that they, that they gain from small scale mining. And that's the money circulates within communities. So that's, but uh, it's invisible in terms of the national landscape, in terms of the national economy. Because we don't, we don't tag the actual employment, we don't tag the actual output from those specific mining operations. And in terms of environmental damage, we right now can really is the extent of environmental impact. That's right. So many mm -hmm. small scale mining operations that we don't go inside the mines. And actually, they were saying that there are cities inside uh, those mining communities yeah. underground. It's quite mm -hmm. difficult for the national government and even the local government to monitor the extent of damages environment wise you know, in terms of those mm -hmm. small scale. Okay. But I guess we have to balance the two. Yeah. And policy-wise, mm -mm. we, can, we yeah. can have a good anchor. Probably look at things of Yeah. Whereas yeah. the local structures in terms of uh, regulating uh, the operation of small scale mining. That's area. right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and your study with um, Engineer Pascual has given you know some really good ways forward, no? And uh, well, admittedly, mahirap, mahirap talaga, but uh, very difficult uh, ways forward. Yeah, very difficult ways forward. Okay, on the next question, uh, Dr. Uh, Engineer Sandoval, uh, would you like to answer this? Um, how can we curb uh, uh, black market, the black market on small scale uh, mining? No, uh, has there been any? Uh, can you cite efforts that um, the DNR is uh, implementing with the uh, with the BOC to um, you know curb this illegal activity? Uh, one of the uh, uh, solution actually that has been mentioned earlier with uh, to, to counter, of course, the the uh, sales of the black market is the uh, recent uh, issuance of the uh, RA11256, which uh, exempts the, uh, the uh, small-scale miners on the 
uh, payment of uh, uh, income tax and uh, and uh, excise tax, uh, which is, of course, uh, I said before earlier that uh, uh, one of the reasons uh, that there is a significant drop of sales of gold from uh, 2000, I think it was 2010 or 2011, uh, and uh, uh, of course, uh, wherein if you look uh, backward uh, on the data set on this study, uh, that uh, we can easily, uh, yeah, uh, we can uh, uh, actually, we, we observed the, that uh, even during the time <clears throat> that uh, there is no, uh, uh, there is no imposed taxes, that there is a big uh, difference between the production of gold, uh, the, the small scale mining production is much higher than what the large scale has, uh, was produced. No? So uh, now with respect to, uh, of course, to the uh, enforcement regulations, actually, um, I think it is important for the uh, BOC, of course, to, uh, uh, to, to, to do their part. No? Uh, with respect to uh, to needed actions on the uh, challenges that are been facing on the uh, quote unquote on the uh, uh, backdoor sales of uh, gold in the, the black market. Okay, thank you very much for your response, uh, Engineer uh, Santabal. Now let us. Okay, time check is already four o three. However, we still have a uh, several questions from our. Um, uh, from our Facebook viewers and our participants on WebEx. So with the permission of our uh, panelists, uh, we will um, extend the open forum a bit for a, a few more minutes. I hope that is okay with you, gentlemen. Is that okay? Thank you very much. Okay, uh, Eng okay. Engineer Pascual, you were raising your hand, sir. Your microphone, sir, please turn it on. Okay. All right. Uh, yes. Uh, there is a group from the Banco Central part of the participant. Uh, so I think the, the, this question that Ted has tried to answer, it's, it, it will be interesting uh, to hear uh, something from the ESP guys. Sorry, sir. Hello. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, we have attendees from the Banco Central. Yes, sir. We have attendees from the um, from the Banco Central, and uh, well, if if any if any of our attendees from the Banco Central are uh, watching, and would if you would like to um, leave your comment or your response in our chat box, please feel free to do so. But at this point, let's go to the to the next question, and it, this is about um, okay uh, from Rocky Dimakulangan. As you know, that all small scale miners are really small. They manage to skirt the definition due to political patronage. How is this loophole monitored, and what are the programs to enforce the law vis-a-vis -vis ensuring all uh, mining small scale mining activities comply with the legal definition of scale? Uh, Engineer Sandoval, would you like to respond to this, sir? Uh, uh, the question will be addressed, of course, by the uh, in compliance with uh, what we have now uh, uh, on the uh, implementing rules of regulations of the uh, small scale mining law. So, we're in uh, uh, from the applications to the registrations, of course. Uh, 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 up to the uh, issuance of the uh, contract and, uh, of course, up to the operations. Um, I think uh, what's really important is uh, the uh, compliance on, uh, on uh, the uh, law. And uh, actually, MGB is, uh, is uh, uh, always looking on the... Uh, on the uh, uh, on the options or, or on the direction on the directions that will uh, help the uh, the applicant for these small scale miners and in fact on the recent amendment of the uh, amend amendment of the ir 
of implementing rules regulations of the 776, uh, one of its aim is to uh, simplify, to, uh, to reduce the requirements um, so that uh, uh, those who, uh, first who are uh, uh, applying for it can, 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 uh, can uh, go uh, into formalization. Okay, thank you for that, um, Engineer Ted. Okay, let's, Sunny, please go ahead. Yes, Sheila. Probably the biggest realization that we had when we did the study is that we we realized that small scale mining really is not that small. We're dealing mm -hmm. with millions and millions of pesos uh, being uh, unaccounted for in terms of actual outputs within the mine. So I guess. Uh, we have to look into that. And the earlier answer with regard to uh, the question on the black market has black to be market. addressed seriously. Because okay. right now, I don't see any any serious attempt to, to go after black mm -hmm. market operatives. And probably it's quite easy to do that if you are serious about trying to stop that uh, that leakage or that, that mm -hmm. trade that we have. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Just... Uh... Just to share a comment from uh, Henry Salvad, because we were talking about, uh, you know, redefining the scale, no? Small, small scale versus uh, large scale mining. Sabi ni Henry Salvado, of the AGC, no? Of the Artisanal uh, Gold Council, small scale mining should be recategorized re into large, medium, and small, and redefined. Okay, uh-huh. Let's now go to the next... Um, Question. Okay. Um, we already asked the question about the, the, the child labor. Okay, Sunny, this is for you. LCs are given awards for good governance. Does the criteria include the regulation of small scale mining? Parang well, this is still naman of good governance. I know all of specific for SSM, no? Uh uh. uh. There, right. are, there are checklists. There, there are checklists, are checklists no? for mm -hmm. the SGLG. Uh, uh -uh. I don't see anything really definitely pertaining to small scale mining, but there are indirect uh, indicators pointing toward um, responsible mining. For example, those indicators relating to disaster management and, uh, and good governance. Um, yeah, but I think if a locality is uh, uh, hosting, for example, mining activities, they need to have the proper avenue to, to regulate or to monitor, mm -hmm. or to have that oversight function, even if it's not legally within the, uh, the legal bounds that they have that function. That, uh, even if it's extra legal in so many ways. Okay. Thank you very much, Sunny. A while ago, we were talking about the um, the the revenue loss incurred by the government now from from the black market from black market operations and here we have a comment from from Charmaine Odicta of uh, the Department of Finance and sabi niya, based on the data presented the decline in the sale of gold by small scale miners to the BSP is likely an enforcement issue more than a tax issue RA11256 was signed into law in 2019 to encourage small scale miners to sell their gold to BSP by exempting the gold sold to BSP from income tax and excise tax. And we have covered this in our discussion a while ago. Thank you very much, Charmaine. Okay. Uh huh. Okay. Okay. This is another interesting question. It's uh, a while ago we asked about child labor. And uh, this is about gender based violence in small scale mining communities. And um, Engineer Sandoval, this is for you. Is the MGB in partnership with other national government agencies also monitoring gender-based violence in small-scale mining communities? Meron po bang ganitong uh, ginagawa ang ating uh, MGB? Uh, there are some studies before in collaboration with uh, some project, of course, uh, with, the, with respect to the... Uh, uh, gender uh, uh, concern uh, in the uh, small scale mining sector. And uh, we've been part of that as, uh, of course, as a resource person. So, uh, 
But uh, I think uh, this is more of concern uh, with respect to the, uh, of course, uh, implementations of the other government agencies. Uh, so, uh, but of course, it is of importance uh, that uh, this should not be the, the uh, this violence should not be uh, uh, allowed to occur in the uh, small scale mining sector. Thank you very much, Engineer Sandoval. Okay, this uh, next question is from uh, Ron Residir of the Chamber of Mines, and this is about the um, exempting SSM from the payment of in income and excise taxes. The, uh, do you think that will improve the SP purchases of gold, given that many SSMs have been comfortably operating below the IR's radar that is smuggling gold to HK for the longest time? Uh, Engineer Ludwig? Okay, la. Okay, la. Yes, yes, yes. We can hear you now. Okay, uh, the IRR the uh, of RA one one two five six. It was released January this year, January or February, so early this year. Yes, and you conducted the study last year, so it's not it was yeah. not incorporated, no, in the, yeah. in the study. But mm -mm. I, I had some figures from the MGB. Okay, sir. During the the months of January, February, or the month immediately after after the release of that IRR, actually the gold purchased by BSP went even uh, lower. I mean, condition has improved. Puma, Papa. Condition has improved. Okay. So, well, baka siguro one uh, February. It's already like. Uh, Rapid na sharon sa COVID sa yeah. yeah, probably, no? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. At least we were expecting, siguro, even a week after the release of that IRR, kung talaga malak binibigay sa BSP, nag-tick nag na siya upward dapat. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Engineer Sandoval, would you have any, um, okay, Sunny, first, would you have any, uh, Comment on this. Bakit kaya hindi yung uptake yung yung ano yung result hindi ganong dramatic? Is it because yeah. masyado pang maaga yung implementation ng law? Probably yeah. It is probably still activity of that uh, that law in terms of beer during a significant amount of the output from small mines. No, so that's one. It's two. Number two. Uh, I think the the person who asked the question has a point. Uh, with the presence of the black market and the ease of actually transacting there, it's difficult for BSP to recapture that portion of the market that's lost. Especially since uh, right now it's very, I think, very stable in terms of the, the linkage between local mining and them selling to the black market. Unless we put a stop to that trade with those operating uh, behind the black market, probably BSP won't be able to capture a significant amount of that uh, small-scale uh, mining produce, yeah. as we have envisioned with the passing of the gold. Another point that we have to probably consider is that the provisions are deal is still very limiting. Although we are not charging anymore an excise tax or even withholding tax, uh, the provisions there are still hindering in so many ways. For example, they have to, to and that's very difficult if you only have less than 1% of uh, rating uh, are within legal bounds. So it's quite difficult BSP to assure that the source of the gold is from legal means or from legal mining operations if the actual landscape is uh, almost totally illegal or informal. So address the illegality or informality and probably go after black market operators and BSP will be able to capture a big chunk of that small scale mining produce. Thank you very much, Sunny. Okay, um, we have another interesting question and this one is from Katrin Charis, uh, Pagatpatan. Sabi niya, the Philippine Mining Development Corporation has come up with a proposed Diwalwal Special Economic Zone to address the need for the country to increase investments in mining related activities and ensure value adding activities. However, we encountered some bottlenecks with the NCIP. Okay, may, may, may study ka on this, uh, Sunny, ano? 
how can we ensure that government generate income from these activities if these there are agencies such as the NCIT who are very slow in processing the needed uh, uh, CP. Sunny? I don't think it's the NCIP that's in question here. No? It's really the process. And the process has to be tedious for us to safeguard the interests of the IPs, mm -hmm. the indigenous yes. people in those communities. In so many cases, we have been overlooking that, uh, that given right uh, in terms of their ancestral domains. No? And it's quite easy for us to come up with um, doctored FPICs for outside operators to come in and do their projects within those ancestral domains. So I guess we have to go through that process. NCIP is mandated to actually leverage the interests of our IP yes. communities. And I guess then probably being meticulous is a, is a big plus. No, they have to do that. In many mm -hmm. cases, there are uh, so many gaps in terms of that uh, leverage being manifested. So I yes. guess then right now, uh, in that case, uh, NCIP uh, trying to slow down the process and probably account for the interest of the IP community. I think that's a very positive uh, aspect to that process. Thank you very much, Sunny. Okay, let's entertain some questions from our Facebook viewers. And this one is from Shadwick Golianos. Is there a, is there a mechanism um, uh, seen or used by the MGB to ensure a credible selection process of the CSO representative to the PCMRB? At the moment, the usual practice is that these CSO reps are appointed by the LCE. Again, this is not an allegation of an anomaly, but I think a transparent and independent process of selection in the CSO constitu constituency is a sound policy recommendation. Engineer Sandova, may I have your thoughts, please, uh, on this question? The, uh, the uh, nomination uh, with respect to the, uh, of course, to the CSO, so this is uh, uh, it should come from the uh, from the related sector. No? So uh, uh, it is not the uh, the uh, local government unit. Uh, it is not the the, the governor or the mayor who will who will do the nomination. Uh, similar with the nomination, for example, of the uh, large scale representative, uh, it should come from the uh, large scale mining sector. And thus, uh, together with the uh, small-scale mining uh, representative, a denomination should come from from this uh, sector. So, uh, uh, so that is that is uh, also what what should be the case, uh, because uh, when when we do the, uh, the evaluations of the submitted documents, we see to it that uh, uh, each representative uh, was uh, well nominated by the. Uh, by the uh, a concerned group. Okay, thank you very much. And in speaking of the PC uh, MRB, uh, we still have that question on our poll. So, so for those of you who haven't answered it, okay, the question is, do you think the government should reconstitute the composition of the provincial or city uh, mining, mines regulatory board? Okay, we will reveal the answer before the end of the open forum. Okay, uh, we're down to our last two questions, and these are from our uh, uh, viewers on uh, WebEx, uh, participants on WebEx. This one is from the ILG Region 2, uh, Imelda Rosales. Any thoughts on black sand mining, a small scale mining? How is this compared with river quarrying where, where black is being extracted? Any thoughts on this? May ganun pala, no? Black sand, sorry. Di ko alam. Uh, Engineer Ludwig, please. Black sand mining. Uh, it falls under metallic small-scale mining. And okay. It should be governed under the small-scale mining. Huh? Mm -hmm. Okay. So, yeah. Well, I know some... some uh, some LGUs, uh, they don't call it uh, as mining per se, but as just dredging out uh, non-mineralized sand. Okay. Na kulay itim lang. Yun ang definition nila sa iba. Kaya nakakaroon ng pwede silang bigay ng permit, not under the SSA. 
SMA uh, mm-hmm. Okay. Engineer Sandoval, you're ra- raising your hand, sir. Yes. Uh, yes. So, uh, actually, the uh, under the uh, EO79, the, uh, the uh, uh, mining for uh, for metallic mineral is uh, limited to uh, gold, uh, chromite, and silver. Uh, so that is the reason why the uh, uh the uh existing uh, permit now with respect to the uh magnetite mining for example uh is uh as a metallic mineral uh it goes to the uh, of course to the uh either uh actually on the uh on the uh either mineral uh, uh on the npsa as a, or, or spatial uh, mining permit so uh, uh, and uh, it is not uh, actually allowed uh, on the uh, EO seventy nine for small scale mining. Okay, okay. This last question is from uh, Richard Emerson Ballester, and this is coming up with comprehensive statistics on the small scale uh, on s- small scale mining. At ang um, sabi niya, uh, can the PSA and select LGUs be engaged on um, on uh, coming up with this? Uh, Comprehensive database on uh, SSM. What What do you think, uh, Sunny uh, Engineer Sandoval and Engineer Ludwig? Sunny, you first. Yes, Sheila. Uh, I think that's a big gap right now that we uh, we don't have the data for a small scale uh, mining subsector. Number one, we need to have a really comprehensive census of that subsector. We mm-hmm. need to really understand. Who the stakeholders are, who the people yeah. are uh, working mm-hmm. within the mines, operating the mine, financing the mines. That also yeah. includes uh, uh, the value chains as here by, uh, by So by a better uh-huh. understanding of its career would come with proper evidence uh, at hand. And the evidence would come uh, from numbers. From from mm-hmm. uh, the profiles, from the details of uh, our mining constituents. Mm-hmm. Thank you very much, Sunny. Uh, Engineer Pasqual, no, that is one of the uh, most important recommendations of your study coming up with a national research plan. And uh, part of that plan, you know, is coming up with really um, um, numbers, no, on uh, ano talaga itong composition ng sector na ito. Yes. So. Oh. It would have been uh, good if naisama yan sa current census na ginagawa ng PSA. So my portion dun na uh, you can insert a few questions regarding the profile, the profile mm-hmm. of SM, uh, mm-hmm. insert it dun sa current PSA census. Uh, mm-hmm. We're able to engage with some PSA uh, personnel uh, during the study. And unfortunately, uh, yeah, nothing about Small scale mining dun sa questions. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But PSA would be a very good partner for, to do that. Yes. Engineer Sandoval, sir? Yes, uh, it is uh, most welcome, actually, and much needed, actually, uh, uh, for the LGU and the PSA to be involved with, uh, our, uh, with the data collections, actually. In fact, on the large, uh, this was being done actually, especially in the site of the PSA, with respect to the large-scale mining on the uh, gatherings of uh, data. Uh, so, uh, so we agreed on that, and uh, I think, and, and as well as we agreed, uh, which is part of the uh, recommendation of the study of the team. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, gentlemen. Okay, so before we close our open forum, may I ask our panel- panelists if they have any final remarks for our audience? Um, okay, can we start from Engineer Pascual and then uh, Sunny, and then finally from uh, Engineer Sandoval, sir? Uh, I think by experience, uh, government working alone well, it cannot do it alone. And uh, with the help of NGOs, the NGOs are doing very good at uh, filling the gap when where government do do uh, things, uh, especially Jansa research. 
And uh, we have a lot of these NGOs who are really helping us out. Mm. Yeah. Thank you very much, Engineer Pascual. Sunny, please, any final remarks? Okay, thanks, Sheila. Probably if we have um, a final takeaway from the presentation and from the exchanges that we have, it's really us uh, looking into formalizing the subsector because the root of so many of the issues we've discussed earlier uh, formalizations. because of that. We have mm -hmm. uh, mostly an illegal setup, an informal setup for the small-scale mining subsector. And because of that, uh, we lose in terms of benefit capture. And because of that as well, we uh, fail to protect the, the local constituents, especially the small workers within the small-scale mining. Number two, we have realized that uh, small-scale mining in the country really is not that small. And so mm -hmm. in terms of the uh, consequences of that operation, in terms of the supposed responsibility of mining uh, operators, financiers, no, even the small miners, we have to uh, exact accountabilities, similar to, to what ha we have with the large-scale mines. Essentially, they have to look at the accountabilities to the people, to the government, and even the environment. To do that. And lastly, uh, if we want quick fixes, let's go uh, implementing with teeth current uh, regulations you know, that can impact uh, probably the potential formalization of the small scale mining subset. So we can funnel actually towards. Uh, formalization, small-scale mining activities in the country. I mentioned the details earlier, but essentially it's us probably working more towards that eventual goal of formalizing uh, small-scale mining in the country. So with that, thank you, Sheila. Thank you to our uh, audience and the other panel members. But at least our uh, representative from the uh, Mines and Tree Sciences Bureau, Engineer Sandoval. Final remarks. Uh, thank you very much, Sheila. As the government agencies responsible for the uh, conservation, management, and development of the use of the country's mineral resources, uh, MGB's door is always open to the issues and concerns from the uh, stakeholders, from the small-scale miners, uh, for uh, to to address uh, 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 on the, to address this and. Uh, uh, to be translated on the uh, needed uh, uh, either a needed amendments of the uh, uh, current implementing rules and regulations of small scale mining, or even to the extent of uh, uh, amending the uh, uh, RA seventy seventy six uh, itself. And uh, we we we, we uh, recognize the importance of this uh, study uh, conducted by the team. And we want to congratulate, of course, uh, Dr. The team uh, headed by Dr. Ludwig and uh, Dr. Sani and, and and others. So uh, congratulations at maraming maraming salamat po sa inyo and keep safe, everyone. Maraming maraming salamat din po sa inyo, uh, attorney, uh, attorney, <laughs> Engineer Sandoval, Engineer Pascual, and of course, Dr. Um, Sani Domingo. Okay. Okay, friends, uh, now let us go to the results of our poll on the question, should the government reconstitute the composition of the provincial or CP mining regulatory board and then reveal to us the um, results? Okay, a total of 69 uh, WebEx participants uh, answered our poll and 59 out of 69 said that the government should reconstitute um, reconstitute the composition of the provincial city mining regulatory board. So sana nakatulong po ang poll na ito sa as uh, makatulong po ang poll na ito sa MGB Engineer Sandoval. Okay. okay. So our discussion today has unpacked the, the issues surrounding our small scale mining sector and if we look at the challenges confronting the sector, it actually reflects a similar question facing our decision makers this days as we grapple with the adverse impacts of the pandemic. So that question on how to help the economy recover while protecting the people. And in the case of the mining sector, the burning question that we must address 
is how can we help this sector to grow while still protecting the people and the environment? Undoubtedly, it's a tough uh, balancing act, and, but the study conducted by engineer Pascual and Dr. Domingos has shown us some ways forward uh, to help the country simultaneously <laughs> pursue economic, environmental, and social objectives for the sector. So these recommendations include um, the sector's formalization, which requires the implementation of a national research program, sector profiling and stakeholder analysis, revisiting the meaning of uh, small scale mining operations and redefining the policies, revisiting uh, important regulatory structures such as the provincial or city mining regulatory board and stricter implementation of the uh, people's small scale mining program and complementary policies. We, we really hope that our discussion today has been useful to everyone. So at this point, please join me in thanking our resource speaker, Engineer Ludwig Pascual, our discussant from the Mines and Geosciences Bureau, Dr. Ted Sandoval, and Dr. Sonny Domingo of PIDS for the valuable insights that they shared this afternoon. Let's give them a big virtual clap. And thank you to all of you for your questions and comments, which made our uh, discussion this afternoon both interactive and entertaining. Friends, before we close, we have some reminders. So a lot of you have been asking about how to access the presentation of uh, Dr. Uh, of Engineer Pascual and Dr. Um, uh, Domingo. Well, you can access the presentation from the PIDS website. You may also download the full discussion paper and the policy note written by Engineer Pascual, Dr. Domingo, and RV uh, Manihar from our website. The uh, the link is flashed on your screen. If you missed the link, don't worry, because we will uh, email you the link after the webinar. Please also answer the um, feedback sur survey that will pop on your screen right after the webinar. We will also email, email you the link. If you miss that, uh, we will email you the link after the event. Your comments and questions your comments and uh, suggestions are very important to us to improve our webinars. And finally, don't forget to regularly visit our website where you can find um, um, all our knowledge products, as well as the schedule of our uh, events, our weekly webinars and other activities of the Institute. Okay, we have, we also have a Facebook page and we would like to thank all our Facebook viewers and all those who have been following our posts on Facebook and, and Twitter. And finally, we would like to acknowledge the various organizations from government, civil society, academe, business and international development community who joined us today. You can see the names of these offices on the screen. Okay, so next week on August 13, we will have the last of the three-part webinar series with the Department of the Interior and Local Government or the ILG. We'll talk about the CBMS or the community business community-based monitoring system, and we do hope you can join us again. So this ends our webinar for this week. Again, marami pong salamat sa inyong uh, pakikiisa, sa inyong pag-participate sa aming webinar today, to our, all our speakers, to all our participants on WebEx and our Facebook viewers. We hope to see you again next week. Stay safe, stay healthy, and stay informed.